I'm glad. I don't care. Oh, looky, looky, another Marvel event over on that there Disney Plus. It's so nice to see these small creators making headway in the world, you know? Anyway, uh, with Hawkeye hitting screens on November 24th, I figure we should maybe talk about something that, I don't know, has something to do with Hawkeye. Uh, maybe just, oh, spitball in here, uh, 10 things they changed about old Clint from the comics. Sure, that was spontaneous. Agent Martin, report. I guess we might as well start with the same reference every post-endgame Marvel property has to bring up in some way, the snap, or the blip, or whatever. See, in the comics, the snap is actually not nearly as big a deal as in the MCU. It's still a huge, like, it's still, you know, half-life gone stuff. But basically, uh, Thanos wants to impress the living personification of death, and so he uses the power of the Infinity Stones, plus one iconic snap of his fingers, to erase half of all life. Yeah, in the comics, Thanos is, is kind of a simp. Anyway, uh, among the heroes snuffed out of existence is Hawkeye. And uh, in the movies, of course, he's just, he's just dandy. I mean, minus the whole losing his entire family and becoming an edgy anti-hero thing. In the Avengers, we're introduced to Hawkeye after a brief cameo in Thor, and it's not long before he's put under Loki's mind control and forced into villainy. This might have been a bit of a nod to his comic book origin. See, Hawkeye first premiered as a character in Tales of Suspense number 57, much like how Jeremy Renner started off as Jeffrey Dahmer, Clint Barton also started off as a bit of a villain. Well. Sorta. Uh, his villainy is a bit overplayed when dropped as trivia on unsuspecting noobs. Basically, he was a gifted marksman who decided to don a costume to get attention after getting all butthurt that people were more interested in a red and gold superhero flying around saving giant fair rides than this uh, Davy Crockett wannabe over here playing target practice. He basically just wants to be a superhero, but all he can do is shoot arrows, so he makes that his thing. Heck, he only wears a mask because other heroes are doing it. He's a total, just, just, just doing, just, you know, if, Clint, if everybody else was jumping off a bridge, would you do it? Oh, right, you're like a super archer who can, you actually, you'd be fine. Anyway, he then by chance meets Black Widow, who herself had first appeared in Tales of Suspense number 52 as a sorta typical Red Scare villain. Lucky for her, he's a total horn dog, albeit with a different kinda one-track mind. Dude loves arrows. Anyway, he agrees to fight Iron Man in order to get into Natasha's pants, but winds up running away in order to save her after she's knocked unconscious. Anyway. He came back for issues numbers 60 and 64 before officially becoming a hero in Avengers number 16 when the team was looking to replace Giant Man, Wasp, and Iron Man. He explains that he always wanted to use his, um, powers, I guess, for good, and Wasp is like hella into him, and that's definitely going to be a problem in the future. Uh, and then bada bing bada boom, he's an Avenger. Yeah, shock of shocks for like two of you, Hawkeye wasn't originally on the team. I know it's a it's a real shock that the purple bow and arrow guy wasn't immediately teamed up with the God of Thunder and the giant green rage monster. Nobody would know. Nobody. Now this next one's a bit of a cheat, but worth mentioning. Uh, in the comics, Hawkeye has superpowers. Kinda. Uh, if we're being super technical, then he does have super accuracy, a la Bullseye. Bullseye. <laughs> to the point he might as well be a mutant with how radical his skills get at times, but that's still kind of lame for this video's purposes. So instead, I'd like to point you to Avengers 63, wherein Hawkeye uses Pym Particles to become Goliath. And bruh, <laughs> what I wouldn't give to see him show up and pull this nonsense in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, giant Jeremy Renner running around like Godzilla with comically oversized arrows, Yas. Yas, please. Yas. Um, I'm never gonna do that again, I promise. While Clint has yet to die in the MCU, he has had a few run-ins with mortality in the comics outside of the aforementioned Snap. He was killed by Scarlet Witch in the comic book event Civil War. He was then resurrected in House of M, only to be killed off again. Womp womp. Then, once the world was restored to its natural order, he was back again, only to contend with the death of Steve Rogers. At this point, Tony Stark requests that Clint take on the Captain America mantle. And he's actually pretty good, and manages to wield the shield just fine, only to relinquish the costume pretty much immediately. Womp womp. Uh, here's a weird one. Hawkeye once killed the Hulk. 
Yep, Bruce Banner was taken out by one of the Archer's arrows in Civil War II, albeit not while all hulked out. Basically, Bruce gave Hawkeye a Hulk-killing arrow just in case he turned into the big Galook, um, since at this time he was specifically trying not to let himself turn into the Jolly Green Giant and had been successful in that endeavor for about a year. Anyway, Bruce did eventually come back uh, along with the Hulk, just in time to star in Immortal Hulk, a comic which is a freaking rad. So how about that Ronin persona? If you aren't a comics reader, you might have felt that it came out of nowhere, and uh, well, I guess it kind of did actually, but still, uh, the comics version of Ronin has a different origin. In fact, he wasn't even the original Ronin. The mantle was first taken by Maya Lopez, aka Echo, in 2005 as a way for that death vigilante to go after the Yakuza in the guise of a man and report back to the Avengers. She was inspired to use the costume by Daredevil, who of course no one would suspect of being a blind lawyer. Sometimes it makes people uncomfortable. Uh, when Civil War broke out, she found herself trapped in Japan while the Avengers fell apart. As she notes at one point, her allegiances were to both Cap and Iron Man. Uh, she eventually was killed and immediately resurrected by Elektra before being rescued by the New Avengers. Hawkeye took the role in 2007's New Avengers number 27, and he would eventually get Maya's blessing to take on the mantle full time while he was staying out of the spotlight. In the MCU, meanwhile, uh, I guess I'm... He is still technically a fugitive after the events of Civil War, but I think he was just having a bit of a midlife crisis. Oddly enough, for a hero who took over a deaf chick's identity, Clint Barton is also deaf in the comics, and like his deaths, his deafness comes in multiples. See, in the 19th issue of Matt Fraction's Hawkeye series, it's revealed that Clint was partially deafened as a child by his father, but we're not really given a good explanation of the extent of that deafness. Either way, this reveal comes after a villain called the Clown shoved arrows into his ears and deafened him. You know, because of the the ear the the you know, because because of the arrows in his ear. I think it's one arrow. Is it one arrow or just two? I think it's one arrow snapped because it's like the like the arrow in your head gimmick. I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyway, pretty f***ed up, right? Eventually, he got fancy hearing aids from Tony Stark, because comics. Uh, before then, he'd also become deaf during a battle with Crossfire in 1983's Hawkeye No. 4. Now, that was the first Hawkeye series, which was a four-part miniseries, by the way. There's, there's like five now. Again, comics. It appears that Jeremy Renner's iteration does have a hearing aid in Hawkeye's new miniseries, wherein we also get Kate Bishop, who's a major part of that Matt Fraction series. It's unlikely we'll get the clown stabbing our main man's eardrums, but that doesn't mean I can't dream. There's also just more trick arrows in the comics. While other comic book Archer adaptations have played with sillier arrow designs, looking at you, Oliver Queen, our dear Hawkeye hasn't been able to let loose with his acid arrow or silly as all hell suction cup arrow or even the boomerang arrow. Now you might ask, uh, why a boomerang arrow? Well, because boomerangs. And finally, this is a simple uh, but big departure. Uh, while he does have a brother and he was briefly married to Bobby Morse, AKA Mockingbird, Clint doesn't have kids in the comics. So imagine our collective shock when in Age of Ultron, it's revealed that he does indeed have a whole dang family. Actually, better yet, imagine being the MCU fan who picks up a random copy of New Avengers and sees their favorite patriarch, stooping Scarlet Witch. All right, so now you're up Hawkeye TV show. Give us all you got to make this list completely obsolete. I want to see Def Hawkeye, Boomerang Arrows, a hefty dose of pin particles. Let's murder a Hulk and kill off our hero while we're at it. Give me some reasons to do this again so I can do half the work. 